Jesus, we ask that you be made manifest in the name of Jesus. Glorify. Spirit of God, glorify Jesus in our midst. Let your name alone be exalted. Breathe upon your word. Change us. Transform our soul. Let something good happen to someone here tonight. Let somebody go home with miracles, signs and wonders. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you put your hands together for the Lord? Glory to God. Can you welcome somebody to service this evening? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we pray in the Holy Ghost for a moment? Oh, Shada Bahata Bahasana. Oh, Sebeke Teshele Bahana to Rahana do so called Lobahantas of Rada Jacobahas. Koro Bahana Sanamanda Josa Bahatu Shata Bahaha Bahana. Zeta to Bahoshut of Bahota Bahama Hashut of Bahabaha. Maneka to Zebrahanta Sapakopa Kota Sapakopa Kapa 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 Kosha Sapakopa. Oh, Rada Basi Kapa Nishita Dababa. Lana Mama Handa Bahanda de Bohorita Basuka Patushe. Kadi Bohota de Bokopo Koshisipa Kopo Kopo Koshisipa. Kashika Bahada de Bahama Tishita Pokori, Katashita Pokopo Koshisipa. Manda de Bahada Shita Pokopo Koshita Pokopahas. Si prahenda de bahanda shita bahama handa shita bako bako de shati baho sala ni maku se frate shita kata shita bako bako shi zi prahenda de bako shita bako bako de shita bako 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 de shita bako lenda de bahanda shita bako 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 se bako oh rada baba haba hata shita bako 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 de shita bako 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 oh rada baba haba kata bako 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 shita bako bako Manda de Boko 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 Oh, let us interact with the spirit of the word. Let us have an encounter with the word. Oh, let us have an encounter with the word. Oh, tonight in the name of Jesus, your word falls upon the good soil of our hearts. And it changes us. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today we're getting into the supernatural life. Last week we talked about the name of Jesus. And um, I want to find out, have you been practicing? How many have you been practicing? You've been practicing. The name of Jesus was what we treated last week. And we just want to give a bit of balance into that today by getting into what, what is called the supernatural life. Yes, the name of Jesus has granted us access. But the same way you can get into a house, and if there are 12 rooms in that house, you have to be deliberate to check all the 12 rooms to be able to get acquainted with that house. They might even be the backyard. For instance, in my own house presently, I can't count how many times. I've not gone to the BQ. I can count, I mean. I can <laughs> How many times I've visited It's probably not up to five times yet in almost two years. You know, so it's possible to be in a house and not... So if you ask me what is in your BQ, I cannot describe. Even though you would have assumed that I am... I, you know, it's, it, it, it's my house. That's where we stay. But there are places in that house that I presently do not... No. So the same thing with the kingdom. There are, <laughs> there are areas that we want to quickly look into today that I believe would help us to understand and get into more confines or more, more places, more rooms when it comes to the use of the name of Jesus. So the supernatural life in plain terms would mean a life that produces results beyond human explanation beyond human comprehension. Logic cannot wrap itself around it. Um, how do you explain a man stretching forth his rod over the Red Sea and the Red Sea pattern? You know, it, it, it does not make sense. 
uh, if you even want to try, the best you would do is that we should start building ship so that they can trans move from one point to the other, and that would have taken a lot of time. But, you know, we have that supernatural experience. There are many other experiences in the Bible. The Bible itself is full of supernatural events that, you know, sometimes um, when you're reading it, uh, you, you're not conscious that those things are actually miracles because you probably grew up with hearing those stories. So until you look at it, and you have situations in your life where you need miracles to also occur, that's when it will occur to you that those things were really things that the human mind cannot wrap itself around. Abraham and Sarah having a child, Isaac, at old age. You are hearing it now and like, it happened. <laughs> but if you meet a 50-year-old woman who is believing God for a child, you will understand that having a child at 90 is actually a miracle. Amen. Amen. You know, you find Daniel in the lion's den. And it's not, it's not because the lions were not hungry. But they couldn't, they couldn't do anything. It was not because they, they tested afterwards. They said, maybe these lions are not even there. The people are plotted for Daniel. Let's use them to check. They threw them in. And at that moment, the lions recognized their lunch. And they went for them. But Daniel was in that same place. That was a miracle. That was a supernatural event. We see Elijah calling down fire. Even sometimes to put on your gas cooker is a lot of work. Uh, even though there's gas and something, you know, you turn the first time, it's not turned the second time, you're going to get matches the third time. And, <laughs> and somebody somewhere says, pour, pour more water. <laughs> and then he calls down fire and fire consumes the sacrifice and we read it like super book you know like it's just one of the tones and things that you know just happened those things are actually miracles they're supernatural events and the good news is the God of the Bible is our God praise God he has not changed we don't have a you know, when you have apps and you have programs, you have the light version. When you, you see this light, you, even in our um, uh -huh, telecoms, you, you will see some of the modems, they'll put something light. You know, so, we, they didn't have God full in the Bible, and we now have God light. It's the same God. Amen. So, and we thank God because Jesus brought us into a place where we can experience these things. And as a church, we're not going to stop at reading the Bible. Amen. We're going to press in for what is in the Bible. Say, I'm going to press in. Gold is not on the surface. Diamond is not on the surface. So, we would be deliberate about digging deep so that when we get to heaven, Paul and Peter and the rest will probably even ask us some questions. Amen. Most of the time when you are thinking about heaven, you are thinking, oh, when I get there, I'll ask Paul this question. Uh, you don't consider that you can live life in a way. When you get to heaven, Peter will sit you down and say, come. <laughs> it, we're, the, we're the ones you read in the Bible law. do you know why that's possible the Bible says the path of the righteous does what so, so Peter, John all of them are expecting brighter they want to look down and say hey, hey. this was what Jesus was saying that oh we couldn't experience this particular one. But they are getting it. They are getting it. Oh, that was it. Revelation is progressive. Amen. Praise God. We are going to dig deep. Tell your neighbor we are going to dig deep. We are not going to stay on the surface. No, it's not going to happen. So when we analyze all these um, biblical events, we would notice that the actions that produced all the supernatural results 
they always have a natural outlook. But they are backed up by an unseen force. And we know that that force is the power of God. So we can see Moses drop stick and it becomes snake. It was a natural, it had a natural outlook. But go and bring stick and throw it down now. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So on the outside, it looks like the same thing. And that's why you can't copy people. You can't copy what people do. You have to find out what force is backing what they are doing. Somebody cannot be in a fight outside and is making mouth. And you look at it and say, aha, uh-huh, that's how somebody is supposed to respond to a fight. Not knowing that the person has showed the person that's making mouth to a gun in his pocket. What did she buy? So the mouth, the other person is just coming down. It might be no sir. It might be no sir. And I'm like, hey! So you two, something that happens, you two start making mouth. And you just laugh. <laughs> because you don't understand the power behind the manifestation. So to live the supernatural life is to live by the power of the Spirit. Can somebody shout amen? amen. If you take out if you take out the supernatural out of our Christian experience, then what we have is a form of godliness with no power at all. It will just be talk. Our gathering here will just be a social gathering. Let's just share food and just gist and we go. Nobody is changed. Nobody is transformed. But that's not it. Everything about the Christian faith is supernatural. From the birth of Jesus... I hope you know that it is supernatural. Nobody got close to Mary. It was the power of God. And they've not been any other Mary. Amen. So you cannot come to say, I'm pregnant. And they ask you, who is the father? And you say, I did not do anything. It took God's intervention for Joseph to believe. Joseph wanted to just put Mary aside. Hey, mm, I've heard. You did not do anything, Abby. It's okay. <laughs> I will not publicize it. Just, just keep it like that. What you doing? It's fine. It took God's intervention. See, God had to come to Joseph. I did it too. <laughs> outside that it's it does not make sense glory to God so you look at that from the beginning Jesus' conception to Jesus' ascension after he died he still appeared to his, to, to his disciples for days and they saw him ascend into heaven and then the angel told him at one day is going to come back the same way. I hope you are expecting him. Mm-hmm. We can say yes, but I know that you don't wake up every day expecting Jesus. I say, Jesus, don't come here. Let me marry. Jesus, don't come yet. Let me become a grandparent. <laughs> Jesus, don't come yet. Father, forgive us. We are supposed to be expecting him. Amen. I are supposed to expect him. So the operations of Jesus, even on the earth, were made possible by the power of the Spirit. We don't have any record of any miraculous sign that Jesus did before the Holy Ghost came upon him when he was baptized in the form of a dove. We don't have any record. There may be different myths and different things that have been said concerning the birth of Jesus, you know. There are funny, funny stories that you hear. Maybe when Mary was beating him, he wanted to put him inside the water, he was floating on the water. Different funny things that are not in the Bible. So... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but in the scripture, we find that when the Holy Ghost came upon him, something happened. Something happened. So let's get into it. So to, to live the supernatural life is to actually walk in the miraculous. And that's our natural habitat. Amen. Amen. The reason why it's our natural habitat is because our God 
is the miracle worker. Say, God is the miracle worker. So, to live a supernatural life is to walk in God. As long as you're walking in God, your life is going to show forth that side. It's Miracles, there's a particular scripture. I can't remember exactly where it is now. Miracles are an expression of glory. Say glory. Hallelujah. And we have to ex- start expecting miracles. We have to start expecting miracles. Bishop Oedipo defines a miracle as a display of the supernatural act of God in response to our needs. Miracles are not accidents. They are the supernatural response of God provoked by the faith of men. I quote. So, the blessing God promised Abraham when he said all nations will be blessed through you is manifested when we, or was manifested when we received the Holy Ghost into our hearts by surrendering our life to Jesus. Amen. So, and I want us to look at that particular incident. Is there anybody in this room who, when they give their... I know some people have some spectacular experiences when they give their life to Christ. But I want to believe that 70% of the people in this room, when they give their life to Christ, there was, there was nothing on the outside like that. It's not like you, you go back home and your parents didn't recognize you again. Like, ah... Oh, has he changed? Go. No. They still, they still, they, what I said is that, that you have changed a lot. No. You know, they still recognized you. What took place was in your spirit, man. And from that moment, you believed in your heart. And you started having a weakness on the inside of you that you are a child of God. Even though you might, some people give their lives to Christ many times. Even though God didn't take, God didn't give them back. It's just that they felt that because they were in a particular sin that they have, they have left. Amen. Amen. It's because they don't understand certain things. The moment you have been adopted by God, your son name has been changed. Amen. As a man, if I come here and I wear skirts, to service. <laughs> you know? And I wear the kind of blouse that my wife is wearing right now. All of you will laugh. You wonder there's an illustration in pastor's mind today that he wants to, there's something he wants to communicate. That's what. So you will not think I'm no longer a man. You will want to watch for at least another 24 hours to see if I continue dressing like that tomorrow. Then you will call my wife, Sister Annie. Sorry that, uh, you know, you first time, sorry that I am, I hope it's a good time to talk. You use five minutes to try to, is everything okay at home? (laughs) So you see that that outlook didn't change the fact that I'm a man. But most people feel that the moment, you know, that part of their soul reveals itself that they are no longer in the family of God. No. When you got saved, it became one over three. Man is what? Spirit. He possesses a soul. He lives in a body. So when you got saved, what part of you got saved? Your spirit. So your soul still has work. The end of our faith is the salvation of our soul. So when people used to say, oh, let's thank God for the salvation of our soul. No, it's not correct. It's your spirit that is saved, not your soul. Your soul is undergoing the process. And that's why Paul says we should renew our minds. So your soul still has things. That's why when you give, when you give your life to Christ, you didn't forget your name. That information is in your soul. Amen. You didn't forget certain childhood experiences. You didn't forget who you used to be before you gave your life to Christ. It's in your soul. So the person has to now start getting into kingdom culture and get brainwashed, amen, by the word. 
That's the word I can use. You get what? Uh, some of you don't know that some of the things you believe don't make sense. But you already believe it. You have been brainwashed. But it's a good one. You allowed your mind to go and you took the mind of Christ. It's a good, it's a good brainwash. You are taking in the kingdom culture. Amen. I just needed to clarify that. So that miracle that occurred when you gave your life to Christ, you saw how simple it was. You didn't feel anything on the outside. There was no physical change. You just knew. You knew. You might not even have heard a voice. Some people have very dramatic experiences. The light came into their room, you know, like the conversion of Paul, you know. Saw, saw, why, why do you persecute me? You know, that, that was a spectacular event. But it's not always like that. Amen. It's not everybody that has that kind of experience. So that's like an exception to the rule. So it's important. Look at, if you look at it now, nothing dramatic. Amen. And you know that you are saved. So the same thing, let's look at what really happened. You confessed with your mouth hmm, and you believed in your heart. These are the two things you did. And the greatest miracle that could ever happen to anybody happened that day. Greatest. So we got translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Every miracle falls below that miracle. Amen? Every miracle. Even though we have been told that raising the dead, or we believe, if somebody is having a dick now, and they say you should pray for the person, you probably indulge yourself and say they may pray for you. But if they call you that, ah, sister, so, 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 somebody just died now. The doctors have confirmed it. Please pray that the person get up. Ah, you will be telling your neighbor, hey, to pray and put the now. <laughs> person that is dead is dead. <laughs> Which means that in our rating of miracles, we believe that raising the dead is the highest miracle. Yes or no? Yes. It's the highest. Because it was something that killed the person. Abby. And probably a sickness or they slept and did not wake up. Some, but they are dead now. They can't even exercise their faith. Abby? So in, 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 you look at it and say, that's the highest. But raising the dead is actually the highest, but not in that form. Raising the spiritually dead is the highest. <laughs> because a person can be physically alive and spiritually dead. That person who is physically alive and spiritually dead is on a journey to eternal damnation if something does not happen before they leave this realm. But a person can be physically dead and before they died physically, they were spiritually alive. So if the person is spiritually alive, that person is on a journey to eternal life that Jesus gives. Amen. So we see that that change, that raising of the dead, that conversion from the kingdom of darkness is because we don't know the, 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 the power that was released. In Ephesians 1, this was how Paul described it. He says that we understand the power. I think we should open that, that particular scripture. Ephesians 1. Let me get to my Bible. Praise God. I'm not going to be in a hurry. It's our job. It's an eternal one. If we don't finish today, by God's grace, we'll continue next week. Amen. I'm no longer in a hurry. I've been delivered. Hmm? Praise God. I've been delivered. I was, I was used to the teach you finish it in one. You know, I'll do a serious thing. You know, but now, let's take it in small, small. Amen. It says in Ephesians 1, let me read the New Living Translation. In verse 19, listen up. 
He says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. Then he now explains the dimension of that power. He says, this is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Praise God. So this power that raised Christ from the dead is the power we're talking about. And let's not forget that when Christ was raised from the dead, we were also raised. We were also raised. So he's saying that God wants us to understand it. And know that this is the height of the expression of power. And it happened when Jesus was raised. There's no other one that is more than that. Amen. Amen. And when he was raised was when you were raised too. The moment you gave your life to Christ, you accepted that truth and you entered into the family of God. Praise God. I'm emphasizing on this to break something on the inside of us. To break something so that you don't have any hindrance in your mind. No matter what situation you are faced with, you know that your life is with Christ aid in God. Amen. Glory to God. I mentioned last week when Jesus told the 72 that don't just be excited that the demons respond to you. Rejoice because your names are registered. Do you wake up every morning excited? We don't because we're not conscious of it. Sometimes what determines our mood is your bank account. It's your account balance. Have you experienced moments when you just hear, you know the sound of message when he enters your phone and you were expecting there was something and it was one of those telecoms messages. You are angry on the inside. Or you just checked, you just saw that it was one of those monthly subscriptions that you pay for that just... <laughs> when you do, hey God. <laughs> but see, our source of rejoicing is not those things. It's not those things. What's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is you die and you go to heaven. Abby, can we compare, can, can we compare the glory that is set at the other side? Can we compare it to anything here? That's why sometimes they are praying for some people to come back and the people are telling Jesus, tell them not to, I like it here. <laughs> why are they even crying? <laughs> some dead people have gone to heaven and they are angry with other people and they, why are they crying because they are not seeing what they are what the person is seeing amen amen so we are excited because our name is what written can somebody get excited in the moment hallelujah hallelujah so how do miracles happen how do we Walk in the miraculous. We're going to get into it. Let's go to Galatians 3 verse 5. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. It says, I ask you again, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law? Don't forget how this scripture puts it. It, it didn't say you work miracles among yourself. It says God works miracles among you. God is the miracle worker. Say, God is the miracle worker. You are not the miracle worker. God is the miracle worker. Amen. We have to clarify that. It says, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law? Of course not. It is because you believe the message you heard about Christ. The King James Version says that it happens by the hearing of faith. Say hearing of faith. So miracles happen because we have faith in God. Who is the miracle worker? Say have faith in God. 
It didn't say because we have faith. Because faith in itself is actually neutral. Because fear is a type of faith. Are you getting what I'm saying? There's faith in God and there's faith in the devil. And every human being has the ability to express both. So the word faith is neither positive or negative. It's in who you have faith in. Praise God. Let's go to Hebrews 11, verse 3. Hebrews 11, verse 3. So miracles happen when we believe the word. And Hebrews 11, 3 says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by what? By the word of God. Do we have it up there? Okay, praise God. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by what? By the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. The word of God was the capital that was used in framing this same world. And everything a man will need, definitely, is the word you need. It will produce Amen. The trees, the fishes, the shark. What produced them? What was the raw material? God spoke. And he made man another speaking being like himself. So that ability is in your spirit man. Say my spirit man. So when you got saved, it was not a repair of your spirit. You got a fresh new one. Tiaroba. It was not worked on. Your previous spirit was not worked on. They didn't try to, man, let's remove some things, let's add some things. No. You got fresh one, born by the incorruptible seed of God's word. That's why you should wake up certain that at the end of the day, when you return to God, you will not return to him void because you are born by his word. It says, my word, it will accomplish that which it has been sent to do. So everything God says about his word, he says about you. Hallelujah. If Jesus is the word and you are in Christ, where are you? You are in the word. And the word is in you. Amen. Praise God. So, it has the ability to produce unlimited results. Say unlimited results. The salvation package is massive. It's an endless package. You open one and you find another one in it. You open one and, you know, it, it's, it's endless. It's endless. That's what happened when we received the Holy Ghost. We became children of God. We became children of the Word. Amen. The supernatural realm became our natural habitat. Our natural habitat. So the miracles you will see are the ones that you release your faith for. Glory to God. It's your faith that activates it. You can receive from God by faith. Let's go to Hebrews 11.6. You can receive from God by faith. I'm going to get into the different principles of faith and how we release our faith. You can receive by faith. And this scripture says, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists. And that is a rewarder of those that sincerely seek him. Or he rewards those who sincerely seek, seek him. So faith in God opens us to a life of supernatural results. That's why the scripture says, the just shall live by what? The just shall live by what? By his faith. And Jesus completes it. He says, have faith in who? In God. So he didn't just say, if you will speak to the mountain in Mark 11. He first said, have faith in God. Most people skip that first part and start speaking to the mountain. You have to first do what? Have faith in God before you speak to the mountain. Have you had situations where you spoke and nothing happened? There must be something missing. Because the word cannot lie. So when you read the word and you test something and it does not, it's not looking like it's working, then you should check. 
It's not the word. You don't change the word to suit your experience. Amen. And that's what most people do. They start to give excuses of why it did not work and all that. <clears throat> Wait. The word is true. The issue will be with you. <laughs> It cannot be the word. So when you hear somebody say, I, I, I read it, it did not work, then you understand that they don't even understand the nature of the word. So everything can pass away. Everything can be wrong. Not the word. So if you tried it and it looks like it didn't work, it means that you didn't work it. You have to walk the word. Why do I say that? The Bible says faith without work is what? Oh, amen. It means that there, were, there was a possibility that there were certain works attached to what you were believing for that you didn't do. Glory to God. So how do we release our faith? Let's get to it. So the release of, of our faith in God has two sides. Just like we have the Naira note or the coin. We have the head and the tail for the coin. If I give you, I have, okay, I don't cash like that. So if I give you a thousand naira and I give you like this, and, you, and I say, ah, thank you so much, sir, you know, and all that, and then you turn it and you find that it's empty like this, but this place looks like 1,000 naira. What do you call that kind of note? It is what? Counter feet. It's the same with faith. Faith has two sides. If you only have one, it is counterfeit. You cannot buy anything in the spirit realm. The agents of the spirit realm, where God resides, they cannot recognize it as something that can be used to transact. As something that can be used to transfer spiritual reality into the physical realm. So what are those two sides? Heart belief. One. Second one, speech belief. Which means that it is not enough to believe in your heart something. You have to put the other side to it, which is your speech. That's second one. I have a third one but I only usually prefer to say it has two sides. Because the third one also applies to the Naira note. As valuable as $100,000 could be, if it is in your wardrobe, what can it do? It is only valuable when you use it to exchange something. You use it to pay for something, which means that you attach an action, corresponding action to that note, which means that that note can be used to purchase something. The same thing with your faith. So faith has two sides, but a third side is added to it, which is corresponding action. Heart belief, speech belief, and what? Corresponding action. These two sides have to be present. And we saw, and that's why when we gave our lives to Christ, what we did was, it's written in the book of Romans 10, verse 8. It says, in fact, it says, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly do what? Declare that Jesus is Lord and what? Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be what? Saved. So there were two things involved in salvation manifesting. You openly declared and then you believed in your heart. Hallelujah. So your speech reveals the condition of your faith. Your what? Speech reveals the condition of your faith. Sometimes I catch myself speaking doubt. And one minute to just pass just now. What, what did I just say? Then you caution yourself. You know you can have conference call with your soul, spirit, and body. 
see a joke see be a joke see fear man. Feel less on here. Then you crush you 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 judge yourself. Amen. Don't let it go. Don't let it pass. Don't just say things and just let them pass. If you find yourself saying the wrong thing, quickly plead the blood. Because the spirit realm doesn't understand what's a joke and what's not. So if you catch yourself, you just said something and you... You will have a check in your spirit because your spirit man has the life of God in it. If you say something wrong, even if it is politically correct or socially correct, your spirit man will fuck you. And you're like, there's something wrong about what I said. If you feel that way, before you find out if it is wrong or not, first plead the blood first. Say, paraventure. Listen, I cancel the consequence of those words and then you say the right thing. Because that's how you release your faith. 2 Corinthians verse, chapter 4, verse 13 says, But we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believed in God, so I did what? I spoke. I didn't stop at believing. It was because I believed that I spoke. That's why that other scripture in, in Psalms who says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Don't just accept that you are the redeemed of the Lord. You have to also say it. David in front of Goliath, Goliath was speaking. David was not just saying it in, inside of himself. He was responding. He was responding. The Bible says, faith comes by what? And hearing by... So the question is, what did you hear? What have you been listening to? Or, who have you been listening to? <laughs> Amen. What's informing your persuasion? That passion, that zeal that you have, what's informing? What's behind it? Is it the voice of your past? You know, you know there are many voices. And in different situations that you get in, any one of those voices can pop up. Sometimes the reason why you didn't do something wrong was not because the Holy Ghost stole you. It was because you heard your mom's voice. 25 years ago. But you won't even know. When they were telling you, use your tongue to count your teeth. <laughs> that voice came back it was a voice and they can be voices of past failure that when you try to attempt a thing in the physical that voice says to you it won't happen it's a voice and the devil can use those things but it's also the voice of God and the voice of God aligns with the word Amen. God will not say something that you cannot find the backing in the intent of the word. So every time we think saying the word, let's not forget that is the spirit of the word we are talking about, Lord, the, not the letter. Amen. Not the letter. Because if you are looking at the letter alone, then you can consider when David killed somebody's husband to take the wife. It's still part of the word. Amen. But that's not, that's not the spirit of the word. That's a story you're supposed to learn from. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? So when we're, that's why you can't interpret the word with flesh. The Holy Ghost who inspired the word is the one who has to interpret scriptures. And scripture will interpret scripture. So let's look at five things as we round off that provoke the miraculous. Five things that if you are conscious of these things, you will always have miracles in your environment, in your life, in what you do. The first one is the reverence of God. Say the reverence of God. God told me, never teach the supernatural, never teach miracles without teaching the reverence of God. Usually I would just teach and mention certain things. And mention, but he said, never. Always put that first because guess what? It seems like we are losing that in our generation. It's, let me put it clearly. The fear of God. Amen? The what? The fear of God. Part of the dimension of the Spirit of God as we find in Isaiah 11 
is actually the spirit of the fear of the Lord. It was upon Joseph. It was upon Joseph in a time where there was no law. Ten commandments, there was no. Joseph knew that sleeping with another man's wife was wrong. There was no law. It's called the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Which means that there are other things other people may be doing that may look right. But because of that thing, you know, this one's not my own. I should not do it. Glory to God. You just know that, oh, this thing looks correct. But something is telling you on the inside. That, mm, 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 mm. That's not right. I read a tweet yesterday. And the tweet was saying, uh, if your child turns out well, it's not because you did anything special, because the people who did things and nothing happened. I said, this tweet sounds nice, but it is anti-scripture. Because the scripture says, train up a child in the way you go, and when he will not depart from it. So that tweet sounds nice. And there's so many things like that. And you just, ah, word. Which word? From who? From where? Anything that does not align with the spirit of the word, the Holy Ghost, who inspired scripture, is no word. There's no rema in it. Amen. That was anti. So, see, the reverence of God. God will always manifest himself in a place where he is celebrated. Don't forget, he is the miracle worker. God will always manifest himself where he is what? Celebrated. He will manifest himself in a place where he is honored. God help us. Sometimes when we wake up, the first thing we pick up is our phone. Notification. <laughs> it wants to be first in our lives. Let's, be, let's say it now. It wants to be what? One in all, all in one. That's where he wants to be. And a person who honors God by obeying him would always find God move on their behalf. Always. That's our reasonable service and our response to his unconditional love. It's called worship. And when we think worship, I'm not talking about song. I'm talking about a lifestyle of honor to God. That is the first key to provoking the miraculous in your life. The first key. Song is inside though. Amen? Because, and when we say song, we're saying songs that the lyrical content is supported by scripture. Are you understand what I'm saying? Goose pimples and the anointing, they're not the same. Hmm? Uh, I know this. I felt it. I felt it is not the same thing with when the song is anointed. Eh? You can feel it, but is it validated by scripture? Amen. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? There's so many songs that we listen to. The, the, the soundtrack from um, this particular cartoon, Frozen, fantastic. Let it go. Uh -uh. Don't you feel it? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? If somebody comes to perform that song, now nah, the full orchestra is there, you're like, wow, you stand up after. The whole crowd. Everybody will be excited. But is that the same with speaking the word or singing the word? No, it's not the same. So, are those songs bad? They are not bad, though. Don't, don't say I said they are bad. You can listen to those kind of songs. The content is nice. Hmm? But you have to be able to put things in their proper place. Amen. You won't sing the sacred song on your wedding night. Get it. You understand what I'm saying? It's some other kind of songs that you will play. Glory, you won't be playing glory be to God. God knows on your wedding night that he already has the glory. He already knows. He already knows. So there are people who have written very good love songs. I mean, Dakolo has some very nice love songs. Um, Antonio Dion has 
you know, very nice love songs. You can play it. Those are the songs expected. So you must be able to put things in there, right? So when we talk of worship, it is holistic. We're not talking of a 12 o'clock Christian alone. It's a 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock Christian. Amen. They say that's why the cross has two sides. One pointing up and one pointing. <laughs> Your love for God is shown in how you treat people. That's part of worship. So it's not only... ah. So if brothers, those of you that are, that are looking at if the lady is lifting up her hands during worship and crying as the fruit of the Spirit that you are using to say, ah, that game must be spiritual. Then you have deceived yourself. She might have just been crying because she just lost her grandfather yesterday. You don't, you are not sure. So crying is not a fruit of the Spirit. Being emotional is not a fruit of the Spirit. You have to get it. So a life of honor, a life of reverence, very important. There's a song by Pastor Wally that says, if all the men you made choose to praise your name, it won't match your words, great and mighty God. Then he continues, he says, if all the men you made refuse to praise your name, it wouldn't change your words, great and mighty God. That's the kind of God we serve. Which means that either you praise or not is God. But as for me, no rock will cry in my place. So you make a decision every day. You may not have all the things you want or desire, but take the word as true. Amen. That the Lord is your shepherd, you will not want. Hallelujah. 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 I'll stop here and continue <laughs> next week. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise. Can we worship God for a moment? Just lift your hands before him. Honor him. Honor him. Honor him. Bless him. He is good. And if you have been feeling like, ah, I think my reverence for God is having issues. I'm not sure I respect God like I should. Say, Holy Spirit, help me. He is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. If you just find it easy to just disobey him and your heart is not breaking you and it feels like your conscience is almost getting to a place where it's sad, you want to go back to that place and say, Holy Spirit, help me. I want to, I, I want to teach me to honor the Father. Teach me to honor the Father. Oh, shatabalashi and oh, sikabatuya. Let there be a revival of righteousness and the fear of the Lord in our nation, in our, in, in our lives. In the name of Jesus, the one that was upon Joseph, the one that was upon Daniel, they didn't care if they were going to be thrown into the lion's den. They didn't care if they were going to be put into the fire. They didn't care if they were going to get to stay in the prison. That's the kind of gospel that we received. And we're not going to go below the expectations of God. And the Spirit is in us to help us. Don't allow the Holy Ghost to be dormant on the inside of you. He wants to do his work. He wants to help you. That I will wake up in the morning and the first thought in my heart is God. That the first thought in my heart is Jesus. It's express place in my life. Not the notification of my, of, of my phone. And even if I have to pick up my phone, it's because I want to check scripture. Not who sent me a message before the morning. No. God should take first place. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, for in Jesus' precious name. Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Thank you for your word that has come forth today. Ah, it changes us. It transforms us. It takes us from one level of glory to, to the other. In this week, because we believe that your word is true, we, 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 we learn, we'll be excited about you. We'll be excited that our names are written in the book of life. 
Not our bank account, not what friends are saying, not somebody's Instagram post, but what you have said concerning us is what will start to drive us in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the fear of the Lord that is in our hearts. Thank you for the work of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for a revival of righteousness in our land in the name of Jesus. Thank you because your nudges on the inside of us will become stronger. We will not be able to disobey you. Let the waters rise in the name of Jesus. From the ankle to the knee, from the knee to the waist, and from the waist to a point where we no longer can struggle with it. We have to follow the tides of glory. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Can somebody shout a bigger amen? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah.